Good evening. My name is Alexander Hagen. I'm the CEO of a small, medium-sized tech company in Silicon Valley. Previously, I was a financial analyst and a financial journalist, as well as a research engineer in telecommunications. Uh, I'd like to speak tonight about the U.S., uh, French, and United Kingdom attack on Syria. Uh, this attack was conducted without public evidence. Uh, and this attack was conducted against a state that had a uh, nuclear power stating that they would defend it. Uh, and uh, this was done without consultation with the people in either the United Kingdom or the United States. A situation where had the Russians retaliated and fired back at the points, the, the launching pads, as they put it, of the cruise missiles, uh, the United States would certainly have retaliated. Um, and uh, this attack also violated the United Nations Charter uh, and was done without consultation uh, with the populations, as I said. We now see an importance uh, in the constitutional protection that war powers reserved in the Congress, uh, which wasn't, couldn't have been seen at that time because uh, at that time they had no idea that an irresponsible act of a president could lead to death of everyone on the planet in minutes, uh, simply through a series of escalations and misunderstandings. This scenario, had the Russians counterattacked, could have led to a full-scale nuclear war. People, even if they agree with this act of attacking Syria, uh, meaning that they don't care about evidence or international or domestic law, uh, but believe that we should simply act because the United States is exceptional and we're used to acting with impunity. Even these people um, should be able to agree that with this act, we see the template of a future nightmare. With evidence in public, frauds could be detected uh, because there would be more critical eyes. And through a proper debate, uh, we can expose ways of avoiding war, examine potential consequences that might not be anticipated, such as eloquent argument Tulsi Gabbard made that weakening the Syrian state simply uh, strengthens uh, Al-Qaeda effectively. Uh, and, and we can still achieve our objectives, uh, perhaps diplomatically rather than militarily without killing people in other countries. Uh, there's a lot of blowback to this activity, which is it can unify the people around the leader. It can unify the region around an unpopular leader if he's perceived as the one withstanding U.S. attack. Not that I want to get into... Uh, gaming out geopolitics, because this is precisely the opposite argument I'm making, uh, which is the people of the United States do not want to launch attack on Syria, nor does the people of Great Britain. And as far as I imagine, I doubt the people of France want it either, if neither the U.S. or U.K. publics wanted it. Uh, uh, the people who want it is this uh, uh, media class and the Washington class and the generals and the politicians uh, and perhaps uh, the oligarchs, the uh, monopolists, if that's the easier word for you to accept. Uh, uh, Jeff Bezos, uh, I don't know, uh, the Koch brothers. Um, but we don't want to attack Syria. Um, and uh, yet uh, we quite happily seem to have given up our, uh, our requirement that our Congress uh, debate these things. So everyone in Congress who isn't uh, demanding that uh, this matter be brought to Congress and literally to the point of uh, potential impeachment proceedings uh, uh, should be voted out of office. <clears throat> uh, so this class, the media class and the uh, political class, they go, oh, don't worry. See, it was over right away. It was no big deal. And this is a this concept uh, that of exceptional impunity. So we're immune from counterattack, uh, which is like a youngster borrowing your car, daredeviling on a cliff and saying, don't worry, this is no problem. Um, that's what they're doing because they're doing that with your children and your grandchildren's lives. If the, if, if, and the whole class of people, the media class and the political class, seem to have a higher tolerance for brinksmanship because 
they get off on it. And uh, uh, somebody treat, tweeted out uh, earlier tonight uh, a great example, I think, from uh, one of our great authors. I don't know if it was Mark Twain or Tolstoy or who, who described how the people of the capitals like war in their newspapers because it doesn't touch them. Um, and that is the feeling you get here is America has not been, uh, had war on its own borders since the 1860s in the Civil War, really. Uh, they were border wars in the Southwest, but America has not experienced uh, real people really getting killed with real weapons all, all around our country. Uh, so we don't have any concept that when we do these acts overseas, it's really going to come back. Even 9-11 uh, is really, uh, uh, although, uh, you know, terrible tragedy, is, is still much less likely than getting struck by lightning. So people aren't really factoring in having planes fly into them and destroying their houses. It's not a frequent occurrence. Um, it is inconceivable to most people, it seems, except those of us old enough to have felt the fear of nuclear extermination. And so, uh, you know, I was born a year after the Cuban Missile Crisis, uh, but there was still the feeling in the air uh, of the, um, uh, the idea that one day nuclear missiles could rain down all over California. And after the fall of the Soviet Union, that feeling has gone away. But it's still there. Nothing has changed. The missiles are still pointed at us. All it takes is one misunderstanding to end all life on Earth. And that's why it's so incredibly dangerous that we've just uh, lazily and lethargically abdicated this responsibility that we don't challenge our media and our politicians that they have no right to gamble with our lives in these foreign wars. Not just for the nuclear issue, but also for blowback. But on the nuclear issue, uh, it, it, it will come and get us eventually. It will come and get us if there are any other great powers left on Earth. And China and Russia are great powers and they're not going away. Uh, 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 that eventually a president will get into a shooting war and whoever is losing the tactical uh, uh, non-nuclear exchange will escalate to nuclear uh, uh, at some point. Um, so what can we do? Um, all we can do is to inform, organize, and elect people who will prosecute these crimes of illegal war and these political criminals that conduct them. It is not a pinpoint strike to attack the Syrians with 100 cruise missiles. Uh, that should kill at least 500 Syrians based on Libya. Uh, Libya, there were uh, something like uh, 28,000 uh, weapons uh, deployed, uh, such as cruise missiles in total, uh, and there were probably 20 to 50,000 people killed in those attacks. Uh, so uh, I would estimate, you know, uh, certainly at least 100 Syrians have died, and without evidence and without consultation with the people. Um, and, uh, you know, this also gets to the issue of uh, the Skripal case. Uh, in this case, uh, Russian diplomats were expelled from all over the world uh, without uh, public evidence. Now that is somewhat more understandable because uh, that is a decision a country has about how many diplomats it has uh, and it could take it for private reasons, um, I imagine. I still think that people should be consulted in the evidence presented because with more eyes to view the evidence, it's going to get a much more thorough vetting than if only people with a predisposed conclusion are allowed to hold the results. Uh, my name is Alexander Hagen. Uh, thank you and good night and good luck.